Hey guys, how's it going? Thought we could do a little uh, gear video today talking jackets, mainly talking Arc'teryx jackets. So I've got a few different ones here and I thought I could just share my thoughts and opinions on them. Just in case any of you might be in the market for one, this might help you better decide uh, one, whether it's worth it for you and two, maybe which, which style to get. You know, I don't have all the styles. They've got a multitude of jackets and they are very expensive. So, but I think I've got a pretty decent representation of what would suit most people very well. And I think kind of the purpose of this video is that sometimes shopping for clothes, especially more like high item kind of specific items like this can be kind of hard to find information on. You go on the website, you know, they tell you some good stuff, have some nice pictures, but they often, um, it's often hard to see how they kind of stack up next to each other. So that was kind of my point. That was kind of the point I wanted to make here was just kind of to show you like, you know, how that, how they look and how they kind of feel and my thoughts on some of the differences there. But this is going to be probably a bit of a long video warning, um, you know, about 20 minutes plus I'm guessing. So feel free to scroll ahead. I'm going to kind of try to structure it like this. Like we'll just get through the jackets themselves, kind of go through a comparison and some differences and features real quick. Not going to go super, try not to go super in depth on like details and all that, but uh, just a brief overview. And then kind of get into more of my thoughts, um, comparisons, um, maybe use cases, and maybe with a couple of stories to back that up, as well as uh, later on, I'll try to get into comparing it to some other offerings. I brought out some other jackets from some different companies just to give you some options and to show you kind of how those stack up, as well as talk about pricing, where to buy them, and as much as I hate to do it, I was thinking to talk about a little bit of politics just because with the Arcteryx brand specifically, if you start researching this stuff online, you inevitably might start hearing people talking a little politics about it. So I thought I would address that here. So um, again, might be a little bit longer. Just feel free to scroll ahead or just watch the part you want or not at all, don't really care. But if you're like me, sometimes you like these more long-winded gear videos and uh, it might do you good while you're hung over on a Saturday or something. So getting into it, we're gonna start with, uh, I really only have a few models here, like I said. So uh, I mainly have a bunch of the Atom LTs, which I'll, I'll just save you like the rest of this video. If you can only get one of these jackets, I would say go out and grab an Atom LT. It's probably the most versatile uh, jacket that they sell. And there's a reason why it's probably the most popular for that reason. Um, you know, you can find these at REI on their website, etc. But one of the main talk, points I wanted to make is that there is a difference between the the civilian model you can buy online or at REI etc versus the leaf variants that are kind of designed for the military is their military line which unfortunately as of about a year ago they stopped selling these directly to civilians and so they're a bit trickier to, to source now as a civilian which I, I'll get into later but beyond all that, there is a slight difference between the two. So, um, and, and that basically is just going to boil down to some really minor features, which I can show you that aren't too important, to be honest. The main, the most important difference, which again is very subtle, is, is the actual like thickness and insulation of the jacket. For whatever reason, the leaf version is just ever so slightly uh, thicker and warmer. Um, so the insulation's a bit different there. So let's go ahead and move this for now. Um, so here I've got, a, I'm actually wearing an, an Atom LT here. So this is just kind of give you an idea of how it, how it looks. Very comfortable jacket. It basically fits like a hoodie, right? So it basically fits like your favorite hoodie and it's super comfortable as well. You know, you can live in this thing and, and I do. <laughs> and uh, you, you really is like all day comfort kind of a, kind of a jacket. Which is what I love about it. <clears throat> you know, one of the things I love about it. <clears throat> but I've got a couple more here. So these are both like civilian model versions. Um, one with a hood and one with just a collar, no hood. So we'll, uh, I'll, I'll start with just showing you this guy. Just because it's white, it might show up a little better on camera. And I can compare it to this guy, which is like the Leaf version. Or I don't know why I quoted that. It is the Leaf version. <laughs> But again, besides, you know, the main thing, so let's just, maybe I'll just throw this one on. I'll throw this on because it might show up a little better. Real quick, just to kind of give you, I, I don't think you'll probably be able to tell on camera, to be honest, 
even wearing it, it's a very subtle difference. I almost thought I was kind of tripping out at first, but there is a difference. This is a bit thinner and lighter weight and just ever so slightly uh, lighter. So that's not necessarily a bad thing though. You know, like I, I love this one, especially this guy without the, I wear this one, I struck one of the most for sure. I wear this a lot just because it works real well in spring and summer months where you don't really need anything too, too bulky, too heavy, but you just want a little like step above a windbreaker, you know? This is essentially kind of like a wind shirt, I would, I would call it. And it's just so nice and compact, um, you know, being that it doesn't have the hood and then it doesn't have like that extra thickness. It just packs up a little bit better. You know, you can throw it in a day pack really nice um, compared to like, say this guy, you know, still very compactable, but you know, I could probably pack it down tighter, but just to give you a base idea, it's ever so slightly bulkier, right? Uh, being that it does have a little more insulation and it has that hood. So, but again, so yeah, they're slightly thinner. And just to give you an idea, I don't know if you probably can't see, but it basically fits exactly, exactly the same, just, uh, just a bit thinner. Beyond that, which honestly it's a bit cold out here right now, so I think I'm gonna throw this guy on. I love this guy because it's just it's just such a like nice sleek looking jacket that you can wear this with jeans, you can wear it with slacks, you can wear it with sweats. It just kind of looks good with everything. You know, you can wear this to the country club or you could just wear it to the bar around town. And uh, it kind of works everywhere. <laughs> Side note, one little thing I like to do is uh, take a black Sharpie and kind of Sharpie out labels on, on some jackets, just kind of make it look a little nicer, not advertise as much. But yeah, so to compare these guys, again, Kind of hard to tell you quantify but it's ever so slightly thicker um beyond that there's just real minor differences as far as the feature set so on the leaf version you do have this exterior excuse me exterior chest pocket it's got kind of a spandex material here so you can overstuff that if need be versus on the civilian one it is a uh, clean on the outside and you have an interior chest pocket. So you still got a pocket there for some keys or what have you Which is nice on the bottom The leaf version has kind of a nice Little draft collar so separate different material than the rest of the shell and it's just a bit more heavy-duty um, a bit thicker and a bit wider than What's on say this guy? So this also has a tiny kind of slightly slightly thicker material than the rest of the shell on the bottom there. Just not quite as much as the leaf one, right? Another difference on the bottom here is the drawstring. So the drawstring on the leaf is just a little more heavy duty all around. It's got actually thicker cordage. The cordage itself is actually thicker. And then the hardware is just a bit nicer. So this is more of a press lock, cord lock, type of hardware uh, and then the cord kind of runs through this sleeve and you have this real nice kind of thick uh, pull tab on the end of that versus this guy is just more minimalist so thinner cordage uh, really just kind of a you know a set cord lock piece you can slide up and down no like press lock and then going to like kind of a tiny pull tab I've honestly never even used those but just to point that out the leaf version also has a pass-through port here, which feeds into the pocket on the outside here. The pass-through port for some cable routing, I don't know, maybe it could be a radio or something, or uh, or your headphones to listen to music. If, if you listen to music like it's 2015 still, and you know, using the corded plug-in headphones or whatever. But then you can, they have some pass-through loops up here as well, up kind of by the chest pocket, and another one up by the collar here. Um, so there's that, which, which the civilian one doesn't have any of that going on. Again, I've never used it, so can't say uh, how useful it is, but it might be something you want. And it's something worth pointing out nonetheless. <clears throat> the only other difference uh, really is on the side underarm material here. So these jackets, they do, they're 100% nylon shell, 100% fleece polyester lining. Uh, underneath the arms, there's no you know, pit zips or anything like that but it does have kind of this fleece panel under along the side and under your arm. And what that does is 
allows some heat to escape. So it just gives you some thermal regulation there. Um, these are, you know, it's kind of more active brand company, right? So they are meant to be worn while doing active things. So it is nice to have some type of way to, to, to vent heat out. And that's what that's for. And, and between the two jackets, again, it's just slightly different. <clears throat> On this one, it's just ever so slightly thicker, I would say. Um, you can definitely kind of feel a slight difference there. And just looking at it, I don't know, what the, <laughs> this doesn't make much of a difference, but on this one, I can kind of see the like real thin kind of waffle grid stitching um, in the fleece versus this one. It just looks like fleece. It just looks like what you'd find on kind of those, uh, you know, like surplus fleece wash caps or something like that. But yeah, so just again, ever so slightly thicker. That's, that's really it, guys. One thing I did want to mention, I guess I should take this off again, is uh, if you go with the hoodless version, they have a nice kind of fleece lining along the collar, which the hooded versions don't have. But nonetheless, it's ultra comfortable material. You know, never, uh, never had an issue or discomfort there, but just a difference between the hooded version and the non-hooded version. And I found that to be the case with their other models, at least with the cold WXs, I also have a hooded and non-hooded version, and it's the same deal. The non-hooded version has that fleece on the collar, which I'll, I'll show you. So, in a nutshell, that's the Adam LT. Um, great jacket, you know, I'm gonna throw this guy back on because it's a little chilly out right now. And uh, probably the one you want, honestly, to start off with. This is the one I started off with. Um, so I can get into story time a little later, but let's keep moving on through the jackets. So, this, this one's a shell, we'll save that guy. So he, these, these would be what I consider the step up from the Adam LT. These are the cold WXs. Now, our Arcteryx, they've got a huge lineup. They've got uh, a crazy big catalog. I'm sure that you could find a model jacket that technically is between the Adam and the cold WX, which the cold WX, by the way, is a leaf variant. It's a leaf jacket, right? So this isn't on their main website. I'm sure they probably have something similar, but just know that. And, but in my mind, you know, where you can get into like micro classes of jackets, uh, I don't know if that's absolutely necessary. That'd be kind of like going between like, oh, I got my Leaf LT and my Civilian LT, which is just ever so slightly thinner, which I mean, I'll admit I do pick up this one sometimes for that fact, but whether that's worth buying two different jackets, I, I don't think so, probably. They're both similar enough where they kind of do the same job. So in my mind, you know, this is a nice, decent size step up from this, where there's a noticeable difference, you know, in, in, in performance, moving from that to this, versus like a slight difference between, like very subtle slight difference between these two, right? So this would be a great step up in my mind, is what I'm trying to say here. And again, it's basically just a beefed up Adam LT. Um, same like 100% polyester, uh, um, not, you know, nylon shell. Let me just double check that here. Yep. Nylon with the EPTFE membrane insulation, 100% polyester lining. So same construction essentially for the most part, just thicker, a little bit warmer and the shells a little bit thicker, more durable. And the shells actually is, it, it is a different material. It's using what they call Gore Windstopper which is not a true like Gore-Tex rain layer per se, but it's, it's as the name implies, I guess it's designed to stop wind, right? Which it does a really good job at. Um, this thing's always freaking falling loose. And where I live, it, it gets really cold here. And we also, I don't know if you can even hear it right now, it gets super windy out there. So something like this makes a lot of sense in like colder winter months. And it does a really great job at, at blocking those like gusty kind of cold winds versus th these actually do a phenomenal job as well you know like they definitely cut wind really well like better than you would think i would say um and they, they do keep you really warm as well like warmer than you might think um while also not getting too hot even in like say warmer months like spring or summer you know these make great evening jackets or what have you but back to the cold wx this is again just that much more thicker that much better at cutting wind and keeping you a little warm while still being a very sleek jacket you know so one thing i want to point out was the material again it's hard to tell on video without hands-on but to 
give you an idea, you can kind of hear how this one sounds. Right, so it's got a bit of that crinkle to it compared to something like, you know, the Atom is, it's just really soft and supple and comfortable and uh, not so much of a shell feel to it, right? So, but that being said, the Cold WX is nowhere near, nowhere near as crinkly as say a real true Gore-Tex shell either, right? So it's kind of that in between, I would say. Um, which is which is nice. Um, the the cold WX doesn't have it is a it is a shell all the way around. There's no fleece panel under the arms or anything. I mean this is meant to be more of a, obviously a cold weather uh, mid layer. So you don't want places where the wind can just cut through that fleece. But you do have a little fleece section under the armpit here, and so that will still allow kind of some uh, perspiration, some heat to dump out right there, which is which is a nice feature. Again, very similar on the bottom. You have that kind of draft collar, similar to the Atom LT, and it looks like the exact same setup as far as the draw closure there. You also do have a pass-through port, again, for your pocket here. Um, don't have the little tie-down loops on this guy, though. And again, since this one being hoodless, it does have that really nice soft fleece collar right there, just kind of cozy and warm against the back of your neck. So that's essentially that. Um, one thing I will show you, I was gonna sh maybe do it before I forget, but I wanna show you how these guys layer. So let's go ahead and throw this on. So that one thing I like about these, they do layer very nicely. You know, if it's extremely cold out, you can, uh, you can stack them up as need be. And you know, the sleeves kind of slip into each other really nice. You know, even when you're layered up, I'm not looking like too puffed out, it's still very sleek looking, form fitting, um, which, is, which is nice. I mean, I think these things punch way above their pay grade. Last weekend, I was actually wearing this this guy, just kind of standalone, out in uh, Tahoe, on the mountains, and there's kind of snowstorms coming in. My girlfriend was like, are you warm enough in that? And it's like, yeah, I'm totally fine, this thing's awesome. <laughs> but I think, you know, most of everyone else is kind of wearing these big old puffy ski jackets. And uh, this kind of, in my experience, kind of performs similarly to those, just in a much sleeker form, right? So, very nice jackets. But yeah, also layer very well together. This is just another one I brought out. This is a Cold WX, just has a hood. Which honestly, if I was gonna buy a jacket like this, I'd probably get the one with the hood. Um, I actually was like looking for this guy in black, couldn't find it, and I, this one popped up, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna grab it. It was like last winter, I was like, I need to do Wanted a nice warmer winter jacket. And uh, of course, a few weeks later, this guy shows up on eBay. So I just had to grab that as well. <laughs> Sometimes consider selling this one, but I do actually like it a lot. So for now, I'm keeping it. But again, this is just a nice step up from the Atom. So for those colder colder months or colder temperatures, this might be something you consider as, uh, as a step up, you know. And moving into... This guy, this is a, sh a true shell jacket, true Gore-Tex shell. This is their Beta Z A R, which is you can you know civilian line. You can buy it on online or wherever. Um, I got this from the outlet store at, like on a on a Black Friday. It was a really good deal. So this was, actually this might have been the first jacket I picked up. It's kind of on a whim. We were shopping with the with the family. Saw an Arcteric store. Walked in. Saw this on sale like half off. I was like, okay, let's do that because. You know, this is one of the, this is kind of that jacket that I, that always, that first turned me on to Arc'teryx. When I was younger, getting into backpacking, you know, trying to get my, my gear together, I always viewed Arc'teryx as like the cream of the crop, you know, top tier kind of, kind of wind, uh, rain shell that you could get, but they were like five or 600 bucks, and that was a little out of my pay grade at the time, so, um, you know, it's kind of neat, fast forward many years, I finally got my hands on one, and and it is, you know, it is expensive. We'll get into price, but um, it you do get good quality for that price, right? Like this, this you can tell it's a very durable jacket and it should last me for years and years to come, especially at the rate that I honestly use it at. But just wanted to, uh, just to give this an honorable mention, it is a great shell jacket. There are other options and we'll get into that, but just since I have this, we'll throw this on 
And now, you know, keep in mind, I'm like double layered up. I got the Atom LT plus the cold WX with the shell over it. So this is, this would be like extreme cold temps that I would wear this kind of combination in. Typically get away with, you know, just one or the other puff jacket underneath it, right? And uh, I guess getting into like a little bit of use case. So like, well, the one that I'm wearing, kind of the hoodie uh, leaf, the Atom LT. That's like my, that's my go-to mid-layer for backpacking. That's what I typically will bring along with this shell. And, but when I would, I would swap up, like right now it's winter. So if I'm going out like winter camping, cold weather camping, that's when I would swap out the Adam LT for something like the cold WX. Or if it's extremely cold, like I said, potentially bring both, you know? Um, it does suck to be cold out in the wilderness. So I'll just say that. If you don't have a fire going or something, for whatever reason, you're really counting on your clothes. So don't don't skip out there. I mean, I've had situations where I was uh, wearing every single layer that I had and I was still cold. So that kind of sucks. But, you know, typically you'll survive, right? Anyways, so that's that's kind of where I would use this is like winter, cold months, obviously. And, uh, and as a backpacking kit, as a mid layer, I would like, again, swap out my Atom for this guy in the colder weather. But as you can see, I mean, they do layer together pretty well. I mean, now, again, I got <laughs> two jackets on underneath it. So the arms are getting a little bulky, but you know, whatever, better than being uh, cold and soaked, right? So that definitely works. Another one I wanted to mention was this guy. I picked this one up last summer and I, I love this this little guy. It's just a wind, it's like a little wind jacket, right? I, I've got some other jackets that will obviously that will work for the wind, but I really wanted something like very lightweight and packable and sleek for uh, like trail running or just what have you, right? It doesn't take up a lot of room in the pack, but it performs really well and it's also very comfortable. So this guy I found, luckily, luckily a uh, local store had it in stock and so I was able to actually get hands on and, and once I once I kind of held it and felt it, I uh, fell in love with the material. Um, just It just feels like a really nice jacket. so happy with that and went, went ahead and picked one up but and I'll show you some other wind jackets I brought out too just to kind of show you like this thing is really really is very compactable which is nice but it also uses I believe this is called the gamma I might be wrong um, again I got so many models it's kind of mind-boggling but I believe this is called the gamma and it's their windbreaker one of their windbreakers and it does use kind of a four-way stretch material just very lightweight, very comfortable, but offers some breathability while still having some pockets because I, I like jackets with pockets. I like to use these standalone as well as possibly layering them, but they need to be like a standalone jacket in my mind. Very simple. Again, little drawstring closure on the waistline here, kind of minimalist style like the Civilian Adams, as well as one on the hood, which is also pretty small, but does the job. So that's basically it guys. That's kind of the brief overview of the models I have and when I would use them like this again is great for like, you know, maybe ruck hiking where it's like windy out here like it is. Um, just wear this with like a t-shirt underneath or something or you're not going to overheat too much, but kind of keeps that cold wind off you without without sweating too much. And uh, kind of went through the use case of these already. One thing I do want to point out on um, back to the cold WX I forgot to mention. Uh, so yeah. This one does have kind of a nice fleece. This is, again, this is the older model. I don't know what the newer hooded models are like, but this one does kind of have a micro fleece along the collar here and going up along the brim of the hood a bit. So just when you're wearing that hood, you kind of got nice soft fleece uh, where it contacts your face, which is a, a nice feature right there. So one inner breast pocket as well, nothing on the outside and nothing on this side just the uh, two hand pockets, so. Oh, I'm sorry, and th these guys do have the shoulder pockets, so you have a shoulder pocket on either side as well, as well as the Velcro loop field. So that's basically that, guys. So now let's talk um, price, right? <laughs> these things are expensive. I think, I wanna say this windbreaker, I wanna say it was about 200 bucks, maybe like 180 or something. I wanna say that these Atom LTs, depending on hooded or not, can run you about, uh, I want to say 200 to 250, I believe. I think maybe this one's like 150, the hood, hoodless one. Um, depends when you get them on sale, stuff like that. I think that 
That's about right though. From this hooded one, I believe is around $250. So not a cheap jacket by any means, but they are very comfortable and very nice and they will last a long time. These guys, cold WXs, these are uh, pretty pricey. These are more around the $500 mark um, when you can find them. So that's something to consider. And I believe this Beta AR, this, this rain jacket, I believe if you walk into REI right now, they're selling them for around five to $600, I believe. I might be wrong on that. Um, you know, again, if you're gonna do that, I would wait for their 20% off coupon, something like that. Get it considerably amount, considerably cheaper that way. I think, uh, I, th I think I found this one at, a, at an outlet, like I said, and I, I believe, I wanna say, I got this for like 250 to $300, which, Still a lot of money, right? Like two fifty to three hundred dollars, but even being that's a lot of money, that's like a phenomenal. That's a that's a great price for this jacket, considering like five to six hundred normally, right? But uh, so it's funny when even a, a great phenomenal price is still like very expensive, you know. So they're not cheap jackets, guys. But I will say, typically with this kind of stuff, you get what you pay for. So like a little story time. I was out shopping the other day, like Christmas shopping with the moms. And uh, we were walking in the store and she was like, oh, you know, I just love this jacket. Like, don't you think this is a nice jacket? I was like, yeah, it looks nice. She's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's great. I got it from Costco. I can't believe how nice Costco jackets are these days. <laughs> and I looked at it, she had the little like dead bird logo. I was like, that, mom, that's an Arcteryx jacket. That's like a, probably three or $400 jacket. Like, you know, she started laughing like, no, no wonder it's so, so nice, right? So, I mean, not, not to talk back on Costco jackets. I mean, those are, those are great values, <laughs> you know, if you could, just need a, uh, a warming layer jacket. You could buy those for like, I don't even know, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, and, uh, and they definitely work. But, you know, they're not as nice as these, and uh, hopefully so, right? Rightfully so. Again, I think Arcteris really gets the cut down nice. I think they just make a nice looking jacket that makes you look nice. And uh, again, just a cut above maybe some of those cheaper alternatives. Not to say that you can't get away with much cheaper clothes. I have most of my life, right? I think most of us have most of our lives. But, um, so the price, they are expensive. Buying them, like I said, the civilian ones, easy. Just go online, shop around, you know, get your coupon codes, do what you gotta do. Um, the Leaf ones are the ones that are a bit more difficult to find, right? Just because, I think I mentioned about a year ago, they stopped selling them directly to the civilian market, which sucks, you know, especially since that, came after getting into like the politics but that came after the change of where they sold out to a Chinese company so you would think what the hell does a Chinese company care about who they're selling to but they never stopped them before right but um so so yeah so that makes these a little more difficult to find than it used to be even even when you could buy these they were still difficult to find just because they're so popular you know they would come into stock at stores and they would pretty much instantly sell out so you really had to like keep an eye out I mean I remember uh, trying to get this, this Wolf Adam LT. I must've signed up for restocks like a few times and I'd be like out of town on a weekend or just busy, whatever. And I uh, wouldn't see that restock email till like a day later. And it's like, shit, they're already sold out. And then one time I even saw it day of, I went in, I was like, oh, I'm finally gonna grab it. Threw it in my cart, checked out. It was gone. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so it took me a while to source this thing. And then, and then right after that one, actually, that was like the second or third time I missed out on it. And uh, right after that, they stopped freaking selling them to civilians. So I was like, oh, well, that sucks. And uh, so then I had to start looking on like eBay and, and Facebook Marketplace and things like that. So there are groups out there, guys, like you can check Reddit. It's got an Arcteryx group with a bunch of uh, Arcteryx nerds in there. And there's Facebook groups as well. But uh, I would just say if you're going that route with like kind of the forums and stuff, just be careful guys there are scammers out there since these things are popular and they're worth a lot of money and they're kind of quote unquote rare there are scammers out there and when i was trying to buy the uh the infamous wolf L adam lt that took me like a year plus to find i had a couple guys trying to sell me their jackets and they were trying to scam me so just watch out for that guys like you know be smart anytime you're buying from other people online through forums and these things be smart, double check their usernames against their reviews, ask other people if they've got a good reputation. Um, you know, there's other there's other safeguards in place. Usually good groups will kind of have those rules listed out and try to protect you as a buyer and a seller from getting scammed. But these guys are getting really 
they're getting really uh, clever these days and, and they'll go to great lengths to try to steal you out of your hard earned money. So just don't be that guy. I, I had one guy try to tell me, oh, I got that jacket, sent me a picture of it. Like, okay, uh, looks kind of shady, but cool. You got a timestamp for that, buddy? And he sent me <laughs> straight up Photoshop timestamp, right? It was so obvious. And uh, yeah, I mean, got to kind of applaud the effort there, but I uh, luckily could tell that it was totally bogus. So he didn't, he didn't get away with it that day. Um, but you know, honestly, the best place I would say is probably eBay. So you might pay a bit of a markup there. And sometimes, honestly, that's not even the seller's fault. eBay charges a lot in their fees. They charge about 15% for most like clothes items. So when you're talking about a $500 jacket, 15% is, you know, $75 fee just going to eBay. That's not even going to the seller, right? So you got to keep those things in mind when you are seeing things marked up on eBay, I think. Um, sometimes they're just trying to cover their, their eBay costs and they're really just breaking even, right? Um, sometimes they are scalping. Obviously, I would recommend not paying exorbitant amounts for anything like this. It's just a jacket at the end of the day. There are other alternatives, which I want to get into. But uh, so don't pay scalper prices, guys, because that just encourages those people to keep doing it. They're going to keep doing it regardless. But try not to. I don't like to support the scalper mentality, um, you know. But then again, if you've got the money to burn and you just really want something, hey, do what you got to do. Right. This is uh, still a free country, so I'm not going to dictate what you do too much. But. Um, often you can find guys like selling these again, like you might find some guys who are active duty and they'll buy these things and they'll kind of resell them on eBay. Oftentimes with like little to no markup. I mean, I've got this particular jacket in that fashion and uh, shout out to whoever you are that <laughs> sold it to me, but you know, he gave it to me at retail price. Um, so, I mean, I can't really complain there, right? It was still a tough pill to swallow being a $500 jacket, but you know, I mean, that's just what they cost. I mean, you know, maybe he got a discount on it or something. I hope so. But otherwise, I appreciate the hookup there, uh, whoever you were. So <laughs> anyway, so that's kind of just going over the cost and like how to source some of these like leaf items. Honestly, eBay is probably your, your safest bet and your best bet. Just got to keep an eye out, save your searches, um, you know, and just just be patient a little bit there. But let's get into also some alternatives, right? Um so I just brought a couple different jackets. So this is this is one made by Audi Gear. This is, uh, I don't know the model exactly. I know that they make two different kind of versions of this jacket. They make a thicker one and a lighter one, which I don't, this is the lighter one. So just a little less insulation. Um, again, not trying to do an Audi Gear review exact, excuse me, exactly, but I would maybe guess that it's kind of like the Atom versus the Cold WX is maybe how they are having the two different insulation. But let's go ahead and throw this guy on. So this is something I would think is a nice alternative to your, uh, oh, sorry, I got freaking two jackets on. Nice alternative to the Atom LT. It is a bit puffier as you'll see, probably a bit warmer as well. Um, but just to give you guys an idea, let's throw, go ahead and throw this on. Very nice jacket, very comfortable. Again, similar style. Nylon shell. Uh, this one does use actual Primaloft as their as their uh, lining. I'm not exactly sure what Arcteryx is doing, but also a nice fitting, comfortable jacket that you could you know just wear around town, do what you got to do. Um, so yeah, there's that. These they're about the same price. Honestly, <laughs> they're still an expensive jacket. I'm guessing this one costs. Uh, don't quote me. I want to say around 150 to 250 range, maybe two to 300 range. Um, they do sometimes you can sign up, get like 10% off, stuff like that, you know, try to find those deals. But again, just, you know, there's, there's a multitude of similarly sized, uh, performing jackets as like the Adam LT, right? But you could maybe kind of see, you know, these things just do fit really nice. Um, and they're just overall nice jackets. Getting into, you know, I'm going to throw this guy back on because it's a little chilly here. Getting back into um, so shell jackets, I wanted to mention this guy. So this, I just picked this up actually, and uh, this is from Beyond Clothing, who is an awesome gear company. If you guys haven't seen them, go check them out. They make 
some nice civilian hiking clothes, camping style clothes, performance clothes. You know, uh, they have a whole layering system from your base layers to your mid layers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, so they, what's nice about them? One, they're a Seattle-born company. I, it's I actually randomly heard about them. I know they're very popular, but I'd never heard of them until a few years ago. And I was actually traveling in Mexico and met some some dude who worked for this company he called Beyond Clothing. And I was like, okay, that's cool, whatever. Never heard of them. And uh, just kind of a random tidbit. And that, that's just how I heard of them. And I looked up their website and I ended up buying a t-shirt or something. I, I noticed like, wow, they have some nice stuff, but it's really expensive. So I bought a t-shirt, which I still love that t-shirt. And uh, then fast forward, I started kind of getting more into this stuff. And I, I started hearing about them more and more. And now I've got a few of their few of their items and they, they do just make really nice stuff. And they have some really good value. So like, like I said, if you look at their retail prices, often they can be high, especially for their US line. Um, this is like a made in, you know, made in US. They also have like the same jacket that's made overseas for a lot cheaper, which I think is really cool that they have that option, right? Like if you can't afford the made in US stuff, well, you can buy the one that's manufactured overseas. It's still made to the same quality standards, same materials. They're just cutting on the manufacturing costs and passing that saving on to you, which is, which is, frankly phenomenal and not something you see very often in the gear industry these days right like companies like Arcteryx, Patagonia, I mean Fall Raven, the majority of anything you see in REI those are all going to be made overseas guys but they're still commanding a premium price as if they were made in the United States versus beyond they they are so transparent with their costs that they're literally giving you two options saying hey Buy the same exact jacket, one's made here, one's made there. This one's gonna cost you half as much. And uh, most companies just don't do that these days, guys. Most companies will just go ahead and ship that manufacturing overseas and still charge you the same price as if it were made here. And they're just keeping all those profits, which, hey, we live in a capitalist society. Can't blame you for that. But um, I think it's really neat to see companies that are honest, like Beyond Clothing, that offer those options for people who might be on a budget, right? So that being said, um, I thought that was a really good company to mention as an alternative to Arcteryx or Patagonia or any of these kind of places. But they make really great clothes, don't get me wrong, I love their stuff, but if, say, one, you want made in US, or two, you just want to an alternative, or three, like I said, maybe get into, the, maybe you don't agree with kind of the politics of like Arcteryx being a Chinese company now, then you can look at these US companies, you know, like Audi Gear is a US company. Funny, another funny tidbit uh, of kind of an old friend who's a patent lawyer. He, one of his main clients is Audi Gear, which I like, he was like, I don't know if you ever heard of these guys. Like, oh shit, yeah, I know those guys. They make awesome, awesome clothes. But um, it's just nice to like, you know, so you have those kind of, you know, I mean, just that just shows that they're, they're, they're local companies, they're, you know, like the people are out there and like I bump into them randomly through friends of friends. Um, it's kind of a neat thing, right? You're supporting your local economy. You're supporting the good guys, <laughs> essentially, right? Uh, but that being said, like this Audi Gear jacket is still made overseas. I think this is made in Vietnam or something. Um, which, okay, going, we'll go into that real quick. So like, that's another misconception, I think, getting into the Adam, uh, the Leaf, the Leaf jackets, the Leaf line is that they're all, you know, made in Canada. They're not. Um, some of these are newer. So some of these I bought, you know, kind of post the sale to China, but I also have some that are pre that switch and they're still made in the same plant. What I found with Arcteryx is they they tend to make certain, certain models in certain plants. So all the Adam LTs, they're all made in Bangladesh in their Bangladesh plant. doesn't matter if it's the leaf version or the civilian version, Hooded, non-hooded, they're all made in Bangladesh. Um, the Cold WX, on the other hand, they are both, the ones that I have, are both made in El Salvador. And again, this one is like newer, like post sale to China, but that black hooded one is is definitely older and is pre that, that sale to China, to Chinese company. Um, and that is also made in El Salvador. So I do know, um, let's see, so like this, this Gamma Windbreaker is also made in Bangladesh. And real quick, the uh, the beta, you know, rain jacket is made in China. Um, I do know that they have like the leaf version of like the rain jacket, like the alpha jacket, the alpha SV, I believe. And that 
is made in Canada from what I've been told. I don't have one, uh, can't really compare it, but just just be aware of that. So again, let's just uh, backtrack a bit. So this jacket from Beyond, I would, you know, very similar jacket to this, right? They're both Gore-Tex shell uh, rain jackets. This one, MSRP is, is $600. So premium, premium jacket, right? And frankly, very expensive. Um, this one is not, is about the same. I, I believe, I believe it's around, you know, 500 ish dollars for this jacket. Yet this one is made in China and this one is made in the U S and on top of that, just throw a monkey wrench in there. I just got this guy on sale during the holidays for $200. So $200 for a true Gore-Tex jacket that's made in the U S I don't think you're going to beat that guys. That, that's phenomenal, you know, so that just blows this kind of out of the water as far as the value goes. And again, the fact that it's made in the United States, um, you know, supposedly I, I trust beyond clothing. I'll take their word for it on that. You know, there's been some weird things coming up with companies like LVT and shot stop, like claiming their stuff's made in the U S and lo and behold, it's not, but, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and uh, take their word, especially the fact that they're selling the same exact jacket, but the overseas variant for half the cost. I don't think they have a reason to lie about that. Right. But uh, anyways, so man, 200 bucks for this thing. Phenomenal. I will say it feels different than this. I mean, every jacket is going to have this slight, slight differences, right? No matter how similar they are, but um, overall, very nice. I will say I don't know if you can pick that up, but I, it seems like this one's a little bit more crinkly than this one for whatever reason. You know, Gore-Tex is crinkly. It's just the annoying part about it and uh, you've got to deal with it. But overall, you know, nice cross stitched on the, uh, on, the, on the cuff adjusters here. Nice hardware on the zippers, uh, seal, you know, seam, seam taped kind of zippers throughout. Um, seam taping along the inside of the jacket. This one does have these big kind of getting into a beyond clothing video now, but this one does have these big kind of, uh, zips up the side. It does not have pit zips, which I kind of wish it did to be honest. That's the one thing I would maybe fault this jacket for is not having true pit zips, but it does have these side zips, which can still help vent some heat. Those are two way. So you could just open this top one a bit to kind of let some heat out there potentially right um but yeah there is no actual pit zips that go underneath you know the arm which is where you want it really but that's fine i can live with that uh, nice hardware on the uh, drawstring closure and yeah this is a great jacket i haven't actually worn this yet i just bought it like i said but um Got it. They've come in black and tan. That's it. I bought the Coyote just because I've already got a black one. Figured I'd uh, sometimes it's nice to have a backup shell jacket, right? Anyways, moving on. I also brought out a couple of different wind jackets just to compare to this guy. So again, just to show you like how, you know, we can even throw him on real quick, but just how thin and lightweight and flexible and packable this this style windbreaker is you know it's more of a minimalist windbreaker i would say which is what i was after um compared to you know very just just very lightweight layer but awesome if you're doing high activity stuff and just want something for a little bit of extra comfort but compared to something like this like so this is a patagonia PCU level five, I believe is the number. Uh, and this is the wind layer. So a very popular jacket. I know among military guys, I bought this one on eBay. I actually haven't even really worn it to be honest, but it is a cool jacket. You can tell it's good quality, nice materials, you know, nice thick kind of, um, I guess draft collar there behind the zipper, but that just helps the zipper not get caught up and just run extra smooth, which it does. You know, it's a really good hardware all throughout there. This one's used, you can tell it can beat up a little bit, but still overall in very good shape and should hold up for many years to come. But the bottom line is that something like this, you can feel when you pick up, it's, it's a lot heavier. I mean, there is a lot more going on as far as extra materials with, you know, patches and pockets and zippers and 
all that good stuff, but that does end up making it a heavier jacket. So uh, it's also probably a bit thicker than this. It might perform a bit better as far as wind protection goes, but you are getting that trade-off, right? It is bulkier and heavier. So if you're packing with all your other camping gear, or equipment and clothes, you know, these things do start to matter to where uh, just having something little, little, little smaller form factor can be beneficial. So you can see, you know, that's about as tight as that wants to get. And I've got some others here too. This is a, uh, what I, I would consider kind of a wind jacket. This is uh, made by Kilo. They make them in all these crazy cool colors if you were into that. But again, you know, this is something that is a bit bulkier and heavier. Um, these are all very similar, I would say. I love, this is probably my favorite that I wear most of the time. This, this one's made by First Beer, which is made in US. I think these run about, God, I, I want to say around 200 bucks, you know. So not cheap, but you're getting a made in US jacket. Really nice quality. You can just, you can just feel the quality. It's hard to quantify to you, I guess, over the video. But uh, once you pick it up in hand, you'll know, you'll know that it's, it's legit. Uh, but it is a bit bulkier again. So this is more of like a winter to me. I don't know like whatever it, I wear this all the time, but this is kind of just a more active style wind uh, very minimalist wind shirt really is what it is So just wanted to give you guys some ideas there But yeah, there are really great companies that do still make their stuff in the US um, or you know US Canada Europe Europe has some awesome gear companies to look at too that I know they're not really on our radar as much. Being Americans, we tend to see more American company stuff. But, um, you know, the Europeans, they, they've got some amazing, um, I guess, nature. they got some amazing geography over there with, you know, the Swiss Alps and just all of a multitude of climates and temperatures. And they've been doing it a lot longer than we have. So they know a thing or two about, you know, gear and clothing. And, and they make some really nice pieces over there that uh, if you do some research, you'll find some cool stuff. So I would, I would definitely highly recommend, you know, supporting um, the people that pioneer this stuff, that, that uh, do the hard research and the hard work um, developing these kind of like specialty performance items, you know, support those guys over the guys that are like knockoff clones or you know the guys that are shipping jobs overseas sometimes it can be much easier said than done I, I get that but there are just know that there are options out there right guys so i think we'll leave it at that um well real quick we'll get into uh so going back to kind of the politic thing you know a lot of guys who loved arcteryx jackets for many years as soon as they sold to china you know woke culture right it's gonna make an uproar about everything and that was like the final straw, the big no-no. And a lot of guys are saying, well, that's it. I'm fucking burning all my Arcteryx jackets now <laughs> or however dramatic they want to be. But essentially like, oh, I'm not going to like buy Arcteryx anymore, um, which fair, you know, I mean, I, I don't hate you for that. I don't fault you for that at all. I would just say that, you know, don't, my bottom line is like, guys, don't let politics, don't let politics dictate your lives too much. You right? Like, we're, those things are out of our control by and large and um, bottom line is if there's a product that you like and it's a nice product uh, but say the the cousin of the owner of the company got caught on Instagram like doing some shady stuff like just buy the damn thing and enjoy it <laughs> because at the end of the day you know it's a jacket or whatever the item might be it, you know jackets are apolitical right they don't know the people that are making them what kind of politics are going on behind the scenes there. They're just there to exist and be a good jacket. If it's a good jacket and you like the jacket, buy the damn jacket. That's kind of my thought on it uh, to a degree, right? You know, I mean, obviously we don't want to support evil. We don't want to support all these kind of things, which, but let's be real. When we're talking China, guys, we're intertwined with them no matter how you want to slice it. Look around your house. Guarantee half of your shit's made in China regardless. Look at your closet. Guarantee more than half of your crap's made in China. You know, are you going to go throw out all that stuff too? Did you ever make a big deal about it with any of your other stuff? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I'm definitely not faulting you for wanting to support local, support American businesses. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is let's just, you know, 
let's just be reasonable and let's take it all with a grain of salt because at the end of the day, uh, what we say and do, honestly, it might, uh, might be a little bit of pessimistic attitude, I understand, but it's not going to matter too much. It's not going to change things too much. And everyone's got their skeletons in the closet, right? So um, I guess I'll just leave it at that. You know, do whatever you want to do. I mean, that's what it's all about. Whatever you feel is right, I, I applaud you for that. But just don't let politics dictate your lives too much, guys. You know, I see families out there not talking to each other <laughs> over uh, difference in opinion of politics, which neither of them have any control over whatsoever. And it's like, don't let things come to that point, you know, like family is important, friends are important, relationships are important. Don't let these people, these freaking, <sighs> try not to get into it, but don't let them ruin your personal relationships over their bullshit, essentially is what I wanted to say. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. That's my thought process there. Uh, I'm not throwing away my Arcteris jackets, guys. I know people will still play, pay plenty of money for these if I did want to sell them. I, I might downsize a bit because uh, it is a bit ridiculous here. I've, Probably spent way too many paychecks on these things. But I do use most of them. They do all have their purpose for me. Um, whether it's worth it for you, that's for you to decide. But in my mind, they do still make a very nice jacket. And uh, I will say I'm a bit, maybe a bit archaic out at this point. I'm probably be looking at other offerings if I ever needed more jackets, which I don't really. I've got more than these, honestly. So, But um, if you are interested, Hopefully this video gave you some things to think about and maybe taught you a thing or two. And uh, if that did, then hey, mission accomplished, right? So without anything else to say, I think we will leave it at that. And if you have any questions, like always, go ahead and post them, let me know. Uh, I don't always get to it too fast, but I will eventually probably read those and, and respond to you. So appreciate your patience on that, guys. And uh, until next time, take it all, take it, take it easy. Keep it sleazy. Peace.